Knowledge is power, and you need it every hour. Read a book. That's what our program is all about today, reading books and making them a part of your life every day and learning that knowledge. Welcome to Well Read, a program about a little bit of this and a little bit of that at your Ames Public Library. Today we have some of our experts in our juvenile, or in our juvenile fiction, in our juvenile <laughs> graphic novels, and in your library, your Ames Public Library in the Youth Department. So let's welcome Rosie Hi. and Bree and Anastasia, who are here to talk today to talk about the best of 2015 in, in the graphic novel area, the J nonfiction and ETR nonfiction, which is easy to read nonfiction, and our juvenile fiction. Mm -hmm. So my quote came from this particular book, The Book Itch. The Book Itch. And um, you know, knowledge is power. Mm -hmm. So what kind of knowledge do we have? What kind of power do we have in this top shelf? A lot. <laughs> there are some really, really great ones. Um, I'd like to start with, um, yep, Sunny Side Up. Um, this is a graphic novel by Jennifer Holm. And for the last few years, there's been a huge um, following of Raina Telgemeier's Smile and Drama and Sisters books. Um, and I loved it when this one came out because this is a great companion for it, especially for the younger readers who might not be quite at the content-wise of um, the young adult um, readers of that. Um, this is about Sunny, and she is, it starts with, this is about her summer, and she is spending her summer in Florida with her grandfather at kind of a retirement community. <laughs> and there aren't a lot of young people around, and she's kind of out of her element, and she just really is, feels bad about leaving home and feels that she was sent down there because she had done something wrong. But there were some, there's some family issues that come up as it goes along. And um, it's really just a kind of coming of age story um, in that feel of, I just want to have fun for the summer and I'm going to get into trouble because that's what teenagers do is they find fun things to do that adults don't necessarily like and agree with um, and stuff like that. So she goes on lots of adventures. She meets some new friends, both young and old, and realizes um, a lot about her family along the way. Yeah, it just comes, she really comes to term with like there's things that go on in the adult world and she has an older teenage yes. brother that's having some issues mm -hmm. and it's just very nicely sensitively covered where she starts to understand more and more and her parents have conversations with her and so you can see like the awkward family dynamics about things that nobody talks about but then they start to talk about it so it's a great conversation starter too as well as just a fun book to read. So we kind of jump right to that graphic novel and I'd like to again open it back up and, and um, graphic novels are what? <laughs> novels that have graphics. Novels yeah. that have graphics <laughs> really, yeah. and conversation bubbles. And it's mm -hmm. yeah. not a comic book. It's not a comic yes. book. Yes, um, which often is the term that's synonymous with this. Um, people come in and they ask for comic books and that's mm -hmm. not really it. This is a full story um, like you would find in the J fiction section. Um, there are fewer words but there are more rare words and more vocabulary and stuff like that. But it is a full story. It just has um, more graphics than pictures along so the way too. So it's kind of like an older picture book but with lots of pictures that uh, you know, a uh, um, picture book is kind of simplifying it because mm -hmm. a picture book isn't as complicated as right. far as the, right. the lines. In the graphic and, novel, you very much have to interpret the pictures mm -hmm. as well as the words because there's fewer words. So you are reading the pictures as well as reading, reading the words, words on the page. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and it's a learned skill. And there's lots of our reluctant readers that really enjoy the graphic novels, too. Right. That, yeah. that, Would, that are successful yes yeah. at reading this because there's a lot more clues going on yeah. Yeah. and I'll, oftentimes people that have a hard time decoding words are really good at decoding pictures like right. I've yeah. talked to my husband yeah. he's not that great at decoding pictures but he's great at words and so if you're the other way around yeah. this a graphic novel this is a great fit so that rutabaga the adventure chef is actually my favorite graphic novel from this year and it's been the one that I've been most successful at selling to like eight to ten year old <laughs> boys yeah. um, so rutabaga he um, really likes cooking, so he's a little bit like Emerald. Like he'll say, let's get cooking, and then he <laughs> gets out his pot, and he um, searches the land in search of adventure and like rare mushrooms to cook and things like that. And he runs into dragons and kings and knights, and there's just there's a lot of adventure and fantasy, and yeah, I've had a lot of success selling it to um, 
to our young readers. And so that's one thing that I've loved about graphic novels is we can get kids that um, are not as excited about our traditional books excited about well, reading. And, and then they learn and they yeah. build those skills. Yeah. So. And it's not as intimidating as a whole page mm -hmm. of words. There's right. lots of words, but there's also lots of illustration. And I just love his attitude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Look at how, I mean, I can, yeah, yeah. He, can, he is quite the little adventure chef. So. Yes. And so, talking about intimidating, a um, lot of our books are now coming out as both novels and graphic novels. Yes. So right. you get the choice to choose if yes. uh, you prefer one over the other. And I like to read both because they just give you a much more yeah. three-dimensional yeah. And, and I'm going to date myself, but those Babysitter Club books that are also in graphic right, novel, right. Or, I mean, and Nancy Drew, I mean, they're all there yeah. um, doing that. Very, very good. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So um, can we go with The Drowned mm -hmm. City? Because not all graphic novels are fun and it, um, about just enjoying the read for the read. Um, mm -hmm. This is an informational book as this well is, as yeah. a, a yes. joy for the read. And it won an honor for the Cybert Award, which is the informational best informational books for the year. And it's about Hurricane Katrina and specifically about how it affected New Orleans. And um, I really, really enjoy reading graphic novels about historical events because I feel like you get the emotions and the feel. Oh. Um, mm -hmm. Like you can see in this book on the page that um, it was actual people, like there's a page in there that I think there's a sticky, um, where you can see there was somebody on top of their roof, there was somebody getting rescued by a boat. And so the words in this book are very like flat, like people were rescued, many people died. But then you can look at the pictures and you're, you, you, um, you enter into that experience a lot more. So I feel like I learn a lot more about the history by reading the graphic novel as opposed to the text version. So, so it kind of helps you, you know, like when, when a child learns to read, they um, are supposed to put that picture in their head and help mm -hmm. them develop right. that. And this kind of helps that along yes. with them yep. to be able to see the right. picture and and then possibly develop their own picture in their head as mm -hmm. well. So I yeah. mean, you hear people getting rescued from rooftops and things like that, but when you see these people yeah. holding on by their fingertips trying right. to survive, yeah. it's a whole other emotional experience yes. to learning about what happened in our own country. Mm -hmm. so, so this one, um, Hurricane Katrina, obviously was a very important event mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. happened to many, a tragic event. Um, and and needs that story needs to be told, but it also um, tells the tales of of the bad things that happened, but kind of softens it in a way. It's a, but yeah, it evokes yep. the emotion children appropriate. Yet to do that. Yeah. So it's yeah. it's a yeah, but it's also a good read for adults. Very to much. Kind of yes. Skim yep. through that and kind of feel feel that yep. connection to mm -hmm. this right. um, event. Yeah. So. You said you kind of referenced that nonfiction area. Mm -hmm. um, we've got a couple nonfiction, and I know yeah, you want to talk talking about talking about the visual of this and how how mm -hmm. that these um, is the National Geographic Kids have come out with a series of pre-reader books for our beginning readers, um, who very much up until this point have relied on the visual for their mm -hmm. learning because they mm -hmm. don't understand the words yet, and they're they're still reading that. And these are phenomenal books. Um, yeah, b both of them. But the <laughs> They're owl, both fabulous, but I like the owl. National Geographic is known for their photography, and they have, I mean, look at that owl. It's gorgeous. Um, and so it really captures the um, habitats that they're living in, the food that they're eating, and all of these. But it's very basic test or text. Um, it glides in the air. The snowy owl flaps its wings. So you're getting some basic um, adjective vocabulary and stuff in there. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a beautiful visual um, representation of a learning process for these young children. And again, it also is a wonderful introduction to that National Geographic yeah. um, J nonfiction that right. we see yep. right. in, in the older levels. So that familiarity of um, the the publisher. Recognizing, yep. Yep. Recognizing that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, and then again, I'm, I'm going with the attitude all the time here. Look at the <laughs> attitude of that bird. Yeah. <laughs> So, and I just would like to, this is another one um, that's a National Geographic yeah. that I would like mm -hmm. to show, the uh, uh, Ultimate Reptilepedia. And again, fabulous illustrations, um, photographs of what yeah. they have, and yeah. wonderful ways of introducing things or topics or animals, in this case, mm -hmm. to your young ones and, um, and to, to uh, see little bits and 
in facts and right. figures mm -hmm. about them without reading a whole book about yeah, it. Yeah, that's so. what I like best about the National Geographic ones is because they have like sidebars and yeah. like so big right. pictures. So a young person can flip through and get a lot out of the pictures. Somebody at the next stage up can just read a few of the facts and get mm -hmm. information. And then an advanced reader can read the paragraphs of information and it's not overwhelming. And the parent can read the side and tell and, and look yes. like they really know a lot. Yes. <laughs> so is there another uh, nonfiction that someone wants to talk about of what we got? We had Terrible Typhoid Mary that was on um, somebody's list. Yeah, we've had this a few Typhoid Mary books come yeah. out in the last couple of years, and it's very interesting because we do know some, but there's still quite a bit of mystery about yeah. how much, like who did what, and what the ethics of how they treated her and whether it was actually justified. So that's something that um, the authors are bringing even into our juvenile nonfiction right. is to understand yeah. the And they do a good job of, of stating that. We don't know mm -hmm. right. from the mm -hmm. research we've done, this is our best guess as to what happened. And I think yeah. that is a lot about what history is. is right. Right. History for us is filling in the gaps yep. um, of you know the generation that's now lost that was in some of the wars and stuff like that. And so we have the information we have, but then we have to fill in the gaps and try well, and, to figure that out. And everybody's time, I mean, she travels through different pieces, and so yeah. people's interactions with her as well yeah. mm -hmm. is a very important part, because my interaction with her would have been different than mm, what your right. interaction. Yep. Yeah. So yep. the history and the story, or even being at the same time, the experiences we both have at the same time are different experiences when we write right. it. Or when she changes her name and you've interacted with her right. and you don't even know that that's Correct. who you're so, so Very interesting. So we've yeah. gone from a really um, few words, wonderful pictures, to some very serious topics yeah. in nonfiction. Let's kind of jump to that J fiction because that's, okay. um, even though sometimes that's a lot of, uh, lots of things that people are dealing with and children are, are dealing with in their day-to-day -day lives and reading through that type of knowledge. Um, we, we've got some really good books here. Which one would you? Yeah, let's start with the marbles. Jennifer. All right. Yeah. So this is a, a, an author that we've seen before yes. mm -hmm. and a book that has a very familiar look of yes. what yes. we've seen before. Yes. So. Yes. So, no prizes to guessing, that is the author of Hugo Cabaret. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about graphic novels earlier. And this is a book that straddles that mm -hmm. divide, mm -hmm. where um, it's actually two stories that are told um, in one book. And one story is told entirely in pictures, and another story is told entirely in words. And at the end of the book, the two stories sort of merge together, yep. and they're told in pictures again. Um, beautiful illustrations, just like Hugo Cabaret. Um, it just gives you that entire um, story with just words and you can look at the pictures again and again. It's almost like watching a movie. Um, you know, it's, you see the big picture and then he zooms he in and then he, yep, on, and he comes yeah. in again. Um, it's a story that is very deep. It's about, um, one story is about a sailor and it's set in 1766, and that's the one that's told in, store, in the pictures. And then we come to the story that's told in the words, and in 1990, 1990 yeah. and it's about a young man who runs away from home, find, uh, trying to find his uncle. And it's, the entire book is set in London, so you get the whole theater and uh, the shipbuilding and all of that. It's a beautifully told so book. Lots of lots of information that is there and mm -hmm. along with that storyline yeah. and I am always so enthralled with his illustrations. I mean, right. I think I could sit for hours and hours mm -hmm. and just look at them. Yeah. And, and, and I caught myself going back, because I'd get yes. to the reading part and yeah. be like, oh, and then go back and look at the pictures and find something else that he included in there that you don't even see right. the first time through. Right. And, and I also found it like, he directs you to where he wants you to be, but then mm -hmm. he includes all this other information in the pictures too. So, so I've, I've read the other two aloud with my grandchildren, mm -hmm. and um, we've gone through, and that's what, I, uh, definitely, you have to go back and look, and, and then, like, my grandchildren are so much smarter than I am. <laughs> look, Grandma, did you know that this went this way? <laughs> and, yeah. no, I didn't. Let's go back and look. And so then we yeah. look, so lots of details in those illustrations that he has. And I've not um, read this one, but it's got, like, fancy... Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. It's beautifully yeah. put together, yeah. too. Yeah. Which very much fits the theme of the story. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. I think um, one of the, the thing about jellyfish was another one that you all really wanted to talk about. So tell me about that. 
Do you want me to start? Sure. So um, the thing about jellyfish, we start off with uh, Susie Swanson. She's a seventh grader. And um, Susie has stopped talking. Um, and as the story progresses, we find out that something really dreadful happened in her life. I'm not giving away anything when I say that her best friend died. And um, best friend Franny, um, who she was friends with since she was very young, um, she doesn't know what happened. So Susie, all she knows is that she went to the beach and she died on the beach. So um, Susie makes up her own explanation for what happened uh, to trying to make, you know, trying to make sense of what happened to Franny and she decides that it was the jellyfish that um, bit or stung Susie, I mean Franny and she died. So she goes into this um, whole process where she stops talking but starts to research on jellyfish because, you know, her desire is that um, she wants the, to let the world know that this danger exists oh. and uh, to warn everybody because it's such a silent killer. Nobody knows about it and it's happening. And so she goes into this whole process where she's talking and she's thinking about it and she's researching it and uh, finding out all kinds of things. But at the same time, her parents are so worried that she stopped talking. She doesn't want to interact with anybody else. And she's, you know, closing herself inside this bubble. Um, so it's a very deep emotional book. And the way, the thing that I really liked about it is Susie is so obviously an outsider. So, you know, to go into her mind, everything makes sense. But to the outside world, she, that. yeah, she's mm. not making any sense at all. So that was the most beautiful Part about this I see on the, on the back, it's got, um, sometimes when we feel most alone, the world decides to open it up in magical ways. Yeah. So we have some magical ways in this last book that we're going to talk about. Listen slowly and tell me about the magic and the knowledge of, that's in there. Um, I think what I, I loved this book. This is my favorite book of the year. And um, it's about the magic of history and family that you don't know that's a part of your story. So. Um, the girl whose name is escaping me now. My, oh, my. Mia. My, yeah, oh yeah, or Mia. Depending. Yeah, Maya or Mia. <laughs> right, so she's very much straddling that right. like the immigrant, divide. like she is solidly American, but her parents are not, and her grandparents are even more so, um, you know, Vietnamese. And her grandma lives with her, and she's not, she's not quite, she hasn't had a great relationship with her, especially as she's growing older and becoming a teenager. But she is given the task of going back to Vietnam with her ba, as she calls her grandma, to find out what happened to her grandpa, because mm -hmm. her grandpa never made it out from the Vietnam War. And so it's about um, her growing into her heritage and her history and um, getting to know her cousins and the language. and. Um, it just does a great job of painting the pictures of like they sneak out and go to the middle of the city one time and all they're on the motorcycles yeah. and the food and um, all of that. So you get just this sense of place and you, the, the history becomes very real to you as well. So that was what I loved about it. I, I love the author too because she bridges a lot, shows a lot of different um, depths to her writing because the first one, um, Inside Out and Back Again, which is not related mm -hmm. really at all with the characters and stuff, but is all written in verse. Right. Mm -hmm. And then this one's not. This one's in a typical um, you know, paragraph and, and long yeah. sentence form. Right. And it's just as beautiful. Yeah. Like, yeah. And she, I mean, that shows a lot of depth to be able to write in both styles and to be a communicator. But I have to tell you that I was, when I opened this book up and it wasn't in verse, how disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> I was really looking yeah. forward to that, that lyrical. The lyrical, um, it's so beautiful. And, and yeah. so, I hesitated, and I'm one of those visual learners, and, uh -huh. and so um, this book I didn't get started then because it's not in first, and I had to like adjust in my mind that this isn't what I expected it to be. So, right. um, so sometimes authors also fool us. Yes, and right. They, they yeah. give us so you can't always depend on that because they wrote this way, they're going to write this way all the time. So, right. which we don't want them to. So, no, I mean, right. We want them to have, have that time. talent. So. Yeah. I think Rosie had a very interesting perspective on this one. So. Well, just because, um, again, um, my story is my son's story. And so um, that whole, uh, you know, my uh, dilemma is she wants to be unicultural, whereas 
her parents tell her she's bicultural, and we are all bicultural, right. unless, of course, you're Native American. So uh, <laughs> that, <laughs> that dynamic was yeah. just fascinating. And then uh, she goes back to Vietnam, and it's a it you know, just hits her in the face. That's exactly what happened to my sons when we went back this summer. It totally took them back. The, so, yeah. That the, this life is there. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it's theirs, but mm -hmm. not theirs. And, right. Yeah. And Sharing just that. the difference, you know, the noise and the busyness and, the, uh, you know, everybody's coming at you at the same time and talking to you. And, yeah, and that was my story. So it was, it's a very beautifully written book. And many of the experiences are very true. I, at least, you know, I totally felt that when I took my boys back. Yeah. So we're going to close on that one, uh, yeah. on that statement, because I think that is also all a part about that knowledge, that books mm -hmm. are knowledge, the words that are in the books are knowledge, and um, they're a reference to who we are and who, when we identify with the characters. Mm -hmm. So until next time, um, join us again at our awards show, our best book show. So join us there and um, keep on reading.